Well, welcome back to The Haunted Beard, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, my name is Jake. Today, I wanted to do another one of the My Favorite Horror Scenes videos. Uh, I did my first one just a few weeks ago, and I talked about uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I talked about Leatherface's first kill. And I had a fun time doing it, and so I thought I would bring you another one today. Today, I want to talk about my favorite horror scene in Mulholland Drive. It is one of my favorite movies, and it has got, I think, one of the most terrifying scenes that I've ever seen in it. Uh, it's often called the diner scene or the man behind Winkies, but uh, that's the one I want to look at today. So without further ado, let's check it out. All right, so this is a little bit of a longer scene. It's about five minutes long. And right away, this scene is interesting because this happens earlier on in the movie, but we immediately cut to a brand new location and are introduced to two brand new characters. And so right from the get-go, we're a little just kind of, we're unfamiliar. Um, this It's a new location, they're new characters. We don't really know the context of this, of this conversation these guys are getting ready to have. We don't know who they are. We don't know their relationship to one another. And we just kind of pick up, really just kind of in the middle of this breakfast they're having, in the middle of this conversation, and that's where the scene picks up. So let's watch the first, oh, minute or so, and then I'll just kind of give you some, some thoughts. So here we go. I just wanted to come here. To Winkies? This Winkies. Why this Winkies? It's kind of embarrassing. Go ahead. I had a dream about this place. Oh, boy. You see what I mean? <laughs> OK. So you had a dream about this place. Tell me. OK. So as I said, this scene kind of just picks up things sort of in the middle of this conversation, uh, certainly in the middle of their their breakfast. And that it, it, there's a bunch about this whole sequence that has a very dreamlike feel to it. And if you are familiar with the movie Mulholland Drive, that is a very clear, that's very intentional. That's a, a, a kind of a theme or an element to that movie, uh, very dreamlike or maybe even nightmare-ish. And it, it just kind of picks up, like I said, in the middle of it, which seem, seems very dreamlike to me because it's like when you're in your dreams, you can't ever really quite remember how you got there. It just you're kind of just pick up in the middle of it. I, I like just how Lynch shoots the scene in that I, I just like the, the, that the camera is not totally static. It is it's kind of almost like floating and it's just kind of right behind each of these characters heads. And it's just kind of going shot reverse shot right for the first minute or so back and forth. And it's just kind of floating and hovering there. Something about that sort of floating feeling just kind of adds to a sort of dreamlike quality for me. And one of the standout aspects of this entire sequence is the performance uh, by this guy right here, Patrick Fischler. His performance, man, he crushes it in these five minutes that he is in this it is just incredible. I mean, the emotions, the feelings, the anxiety, and the fear that he emotes is just amazing. And that goes to, obviously, part of it is due to Lynch and his writing uh, and the dialogue here, but just how he delivers the dialogue and his facial expressions are just amazing in this. Uh, so let's keep going. Well... It's the second one I've had, but they're both the same. They start out that I'm in here, but it's not day or night. It's kind of half night, you know? But it looks just like this, <laughs> except for the light. And I'm scared like I can't tell you. <laughs> of all people, you're standing right over there. 
And I like that shot that here that it cuts to just like this reverse shot of a close up right on his face. You're in it both feels, dreams. feels so invasive. And you're scared. I get even more frightened when I see how afraid you are, and then I realize what it is. So I have to stop it right there because um, I, I I like how he's kind of being descriptive, but he's kind of being vague at the same time. And it's like, and, and that's kind of just sort of speaks to that dream quality because it's like when you have dreams, at least for me, like you can't really remember specific details, but it's like you remember feelings. And he's speaking here in emotional feeling language. Um, and, and that just adds to that, you know, he's talking about how scared he is and he's just kind of, he's painting this picture, but he's using these sort of, a, a, this sort of emotional language and it's really starting to get eerie. Um, and so let's watch a little bit more and this is, um, it starts getting really good here. So let's keep going. Uh, I'm going to go back just a few seconds and then we'll keep going. Then I realize what it is. Pay attention to his eyes. There's a man in back of this place. He's the one who's doing it. I can see him through the wall. I can see his face. Okay, those four lines are amazing. Um, then I realize what it is. There's a man in the back of this place. He's the one who's doing it. I can see him through the wall. And then the, the fifth line is, I can see his face. Dude, man, there is, <laughs> there's so much fear in that line because it's like, I, again, I love just kind of how sort of vague it's being. And, and it doesn't really make sense, right? And that's kind of how it is when you're trying to recall dreams. Like it, you don't really remember, you can't really remember specific details, but it's like you just kind of remember how it made you feel. And the details you do remember are kind of very disjointed, and it's hard to kind of explain them in a very detailed, descriptive way or very rationally, right? And so he's like, there's a man behind here. And that just kind of comes out of nowhere, right? Um, and then he says the line, he's the one who's doing it, is... Oh man, that line is loaded too. Like if you've seen the movie and, and that line within the context of the entire film is, um, it, it, there's just a lot there to chew on. And I just, it, again, it kind of just speaks to Lynch's talent as a director and a screenwriter because he just kind of leaves these little clues, these little breadcrumbs throughout the movie. And in this, what almost seems like this kind of throwaway line um, I, I think there's something there in that, in, in that kind of speaks to the, the interpretation of the movie, but it's such this kind of, um, he's the one who's doing it, right? Such this eerie and mysterious line, like he's doing what, like, what is, what does that mean? And it's just this creepy line. Um, and then I can see him through the wall, right? Again, it's like this, it only makes sense within the context of a dream or a nightmare, right? Um, and again, I just love that. Just those few lines of dialogue, I think are just so awesome. Um, anyways, let's keep going. His eyes, man, right there. I hope that I never see that face ever outside of a dream. That's it. So, you came to see if he's out there. To get rid of this god-awful feeling. Facial expression, great. Right then. Again, it's dawning on him, right? The realization. There it is. Okay. Oh, man, it's so good. 
um, like it's it's the realization that like his worst fear is coming true, right? And it's just like this is the nightmare that has come true. It's starting to play out exactly as his nightmare. And man, oh, it's so good because like the the fear and the anxiety here, and particularly in Fischler's performance, man, are so great because. Again, I I can kind of speak personally in a way as somebody who's dealt with anxiety a little bit, but when when the anxiety and the fear is is settling in, right, your your mind just goes off the rails and you're going through the what if scenarios of any possible conceivable thing that could go wrong is going to go wrong. And but that's part of what makes the scene so terrifying because he's talking about a dream and dreams are, you know, not real um but now he's seemingly having this real conversation and he's talking about this horrific nightmare that he's had and the what if scenarios are you can just tell it's like they're going off in his mind like what if this is actually real now because again it's starting to play out and he's getting ready to find out that you know his his worst nightmare is going to come true and again you can just see it all over his face also too i just have to speak to the score um, because it's, I just like how kind of subtle and restrained it is, and it's just kind of this sort of low rumble that is, um, again, it doesn't overshadow or overpower anything. It, it's just kind of there, uh, just sort of underneath, and I think it works really well, but um, okay, let's keep going. small detail right here. I love that it just pans down real quick and you see that he doesn't even touch his food. He's obviously got a bit of a nervous stomach. <laughs> Again, just his performance here and the look on his face, man, is just awesome. I love this little detail with the arrow. Right? Like, it's your last chance. Turn back now. And I just like how really kind of simply the rest of this sequence plays out with just kind of a shot reverse shot of back and forth um, between seeing him and then his point of view. So let's uh we'll watch the rest of it and then I'll give you my my final thoughts. Man, what an incredible scene. It's just fantastic. I, and I love here, as I was saying, just kind of the simplicity of how the rest of it plays out with just kind of a shot, reverse shot, and then that reverse shot is kind of just his point of view, right? And um, first of all, it, it's amazing how truly terrifying this plays out and, and how scary Lynch can make this by, first of all, the, the, the first part of it takes place in a diner. And, and it takes place in broad daylight. And so there's no like super obvious dreamlike quality to this, right? There's It's not super moody or atmospheric. There's not, you know, really intense or harsh lighting or, or colors or um, a really sort of bizarre, you know, production design or set design. Um, again, the music is just kind of very subtle. There's no flashy editing or, or weird crazy camera angles or anything like that and so it's played off kind of very simplistic almost very real like but it does have a bit of a dreamlike quality to it and but it's it's just kind of subtle and it's sort of like well is this supposed to be a dream sequence you know what i mean um and and so i i just like that whole aspect to it and what's so great is that 
obviously he builds tension like crazy from the story all the way up to him walking out down the steps to seeing what's behind the dumpster. And so he builds tension for four and a half minutes and then you get pow at the end and it delivers. And when it's so great, it's like there's no fake outs because it really does end with a jump scare, but the jump scare is terrifying and works so well. And it's it's amazing because first off, there it's not done like a typical jump scare. There's no sort of fake out. I feel like in the hands of plenty of other directors, this scene would have played out like, you know, he would have looked behind and and the the person behind the dumpster wouldn't have been there, and then he would have turned around and the guy he was with would have been the person, right? Uh, it would have given you that kind of false sense of relief, and then ah, gotcha. It would have kind of had that gotcha moment, right? Uh, but it doesn't do that. And what's so amazing is that Lynch literally tells you what to expect through the story of the guy's dream. Like he tells you, hey, this is what is getting ready to happen. I'm, he, it's like he's spoiling the ending for us, right? Like this is what's going to happen. Here's what to expect. And it plays out exactly like the character tells us. And it's still terrifying. And it, it just speaks to his you know, gifts as a director and, and a writer, and again, the performance, and just the, <laughs> the, the, the look of the, the person behind the dumpster is horrific, and so uh, kudos on the, the design there, but this, this scene is just awesome. So those are my thoughts on the diner scene from Mulholland Drive. It is one of my favorite horror scenes. If you haven't seen this movie, you gotta check it out. Um, I would like to uh, eventually do like a full review and breakdown of this movie. Um, it is one of my favorites. I think it's it's just fantastic. But anyway, uh, those are my thoughts. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, that's all I got for you. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And I will see you next time on The Haunted Beard.